It may be the most disastrous interview I have seen. I don't even know in how long. Worse than, yes, even the Prince Andrew interview in terms of uh, how disingenuous, or maybe it's right alongside the Prince Andrew. I don't know. That was a really bad one, too. <laughs> it's a, that's a tough call. How uh, disingenuous and dishonest the whole situation is. I mean, James Comey went on uh, Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace, and it was a complete and utter train wreck. Um, it really was. It was just disturbing to watch this play out. So Comey's performance in this interview with Chris Wallace was a, a tour de force of lies, disingenuousness, misdirection, feigned stupidity, obvious falsehoods, obtuse interpretation, absurd parsing, and of course his specialty, because he is Sancta Comey, shameless sanctimony. He says things like it doesn't make it any less of an issue after making the leap that there was no bias when the inspector general clearly left open bias as a possible explanation. And by the way, of course it makes it less of an issue if there is no bias. Then it's just, whoopsies, we made some mistakes. Bureaucrats can always hide behind mistakes. This is absurd. But that's the whole point. Comey's entire routine is to say he is taking responsibility now that the Inspector General report has come out, to say this is gravely serious for the FBI, but nobody is really held responsible. We're supposed to accept that there will be real change or accountability at the FBI, and we should know that that is laughable. Comey hides behind massive straw men in this interview as well. He says things like, the American people were told the FBI committed treason, that we are all going to jail to top the FBI. Who was saying that? I certainly wasn't. The people that were following this, that were the strongest voices in conservative media, weren't saying that everyone's going to jail. I never, I never said that these people were going to jail. I've been telling you all along, and you know that. And there were others like me. Although, I am right, like, more than they are. But he hides behind these straw men and pretends that he didn't tell us that this was all fine all along. There was nothing to see here. There was no problem. And just because the IG couldn't definitively prove that the FBI engaged in a soft coup, we're supposed to assume that everything is fine? Comey, my friends, is a smug jackass. You gotta love it when he pulls the whole, uh, I need the context of the quote, or... That's not how I hear what he said. Uh, that was in response to the Inspector General clips played for him by Chris Wallace. Does Comey speak some kind of secret language? Something uh, other than English? Because uh, that's just nonsense. In this interview, Comey engaged in pure Bill Clinton-style bad faith babble. What is the meaning of is? Comey went there. He did what is is in order to try and evade the truth in this interview. He claims the FBI didn't find misconduct because it, hadn't, it hasn't yet been decided definitively whether an FBI employee who doctored evidence will face criminal charges. Why would anyone doctor evidence? And that's not a mistake. That's a decision. And if that's not official, willful misconduct to be put out in an IG report, then I have to know what would be, because nothing is. This is all appalling. But then again, so is James Comey. His claim that it's not how it works at the FBI when it comes to his own responsibility for knowing about this investigation and any of the mistakes that are made, this is complete and utter BS. He also loves to insist that it wasn't the Trump campaign, it was some American citizens who happened to be working for the Trump campaign at the time of the FBI's interest in them. But these are people working for the Trump campaign. That's why they were of interest, and it was campaign-related matters. So yes, it was the campaign that was being investigated. The only reason that four American citizens could be under investigation in the first place is because of a fake, as we know, completely false conspiracy theory about campaign collusion with Russia. They were under FBI scrutiny for campaign related matters. So the parsing that Comey engages in here is 
absurd. But that then reminds me of something that we know to be true. Comey is the worst. The absolute worst. And then also just note how Comey doesn't hesitate a second at the end of the interview to call Attorney General Barr irresponsible. He doesn't get any of this good faith, any of this leeway, doing the best he can. No, 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 none of that. But he calls Barr irresponsible because Barr says that there may have been bias at work. Guess what? So did the Inspector General. In fact, Comey is so obtuse that when Chris Wallace plays for him, the Inspector General saying there are only two options here horrific misconduct or bias directing that misconduct Comey's like I don't really know what that means or that's not how I read the report it's the inspector general's report you idiot but you see the thing is it's feigned stupidity Comey loves this oh who who me would I have ever done anything naughty when I was FBI director no I'm I'm saying Comey I love America so much and the Constitution, and man, it's just so hard for me to be such a good guy all the time. Comey is a sociopath. Doesn't care about ruining people's lives in this process. Doesn't care about any of it. All he cares about is the greatness, the grandiosity of James Comey. And despite pretending not to understand English, we could see what the inspector general said in that interview, and we know that to get around it, Comey had to pretend that he didn't just see what he saw. And this reminds me somewhat of the SNL sketch from back in the day during the OJ trial, where uh, OJ's trick in the courtroom was every time somebody pointed at him to say it was you know it was that man that you know was was the guilty party or like you know the accusation to point at him in a courtroom, he would like hide. And then the claim was like, let the record state that they pointed at somebody in the back row. You know, this is what Comey is effectively doing here in this interview. Um, Here's a clip of the inspector general saying something. And then he goes, well, that's not what I saw the inspector general write in his report. So that's not what the inspector general said. No, no, no. That's what he said, Comey. What would be fascinating to watch would be James Comey in a debate against Attorney General Barr have a a truly sound, ethical, and world-class legal mind against this snake, James Comey. And it is to the discredit, not just of the Obama, but to the Bush administration as well, that this individual was able to just weasel his way up the ranks within the bureaucracy without anyone ever calling him out for being a grandstanding, self-loving, process-abusing, megalomaniac no one seemed to be able to to call that out or to take any action against him after all the different things he did just go ask Martha Stewart what happens when James Comey decides there's some benefit in trying to ruin your life then that moves me to uh, some of the actual exchanges here with with Comey Um, here's the one time he admits that he is wrong which I have to say is just fun to hear him say play clip 8 please 17 significant errors in the FISA process, and you say that it was handled in a thoughtful and appropriate way. Yeah, he's right. I was wrong. I was overconfident in the procedures that the FBI and Justice had built over 20 years. I thought they were robust enough. It's incredibly hard to get a FISA. I was overconfident in those because he's right. There was real sloppiness. 17 things that either should have been in the applications or at least discussed and characterized differently. It, it was not acceptable. And so he's right. I was wrong. But- this is Comey's version of, you know, when someone asks you in a job interview, what's your weakness? And you say, my weakness is that I take on too much responsibility and give too much credit to other people. I just, I just don't know how anybody can handle that in the office environment, but hopefully you'll forgive me for it. That is James Comey to a T. Oh, I just, I thought the FBI had more robust procedures because I, I love the FBI like it's my only child and I've just reared it and, and loved it every step of the way and I'm sorry for just being such a patriot and so by the book and by the rules that I assumed that that's what was going on at my beloved FBI. Smug, sanctimonious, 
slippery, dishonorable. That is James Comey. But it gets worse with James Comey, my friends. The lies in the interview, too. The things that he said that were just flatly, factually untrue. Untrue. Here is Comey lying. Just flat out lying during this Fox News interview. Again, hat to Chris Wallace. He could have been a little tougher on him, but he was pretty tough. He was pretty good. If you watch this interview... You think James Comey is an honest, good person after this. You're just not very smart. Play uh, clip three, please. Horowitz concludes three separate teams made significant errors in four separate FISA applications on one of the FBI's most significant cases. I mean, the investigation of President Trump and his campaign. He, he was Trump, I have to keep correcting you, President Trump was not being investigated, his campaign was not being investigated. Four Americans, two of whom were no longer associated with the campaign, were being investigated. Okay. He was asked how he explains it, Horowitz, here he is. It's unclear what the motivations were. On the one hand, gross incompetence, negligence. On the other hand, intentionality. Gross negligence, or they intended to do it. They intended to lie to the FISA court. You, you were in charge during a lot of this, sir. Yeah, and in fact, you, you signed the FISA applications. Sure, I think I signed at least two or three of them. He doesn't conclude that there was intentional misconduct by these career special agents. No, he, he just says doesn't. it's one of two things and he can't decide. Gross negligence or it was intentional misconduct. Well, That's read, what he said. I've read his report. He says, I, we are not concluding that there was intentional misconduct by FBI. Did you persons. hear what he just said here? I did. I don't know the context of that. I've read He was it. asked specifically, how do you explain it? And he said, gross negligence or intentionality. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. He doesn't find intentionality, but that doesn't make it any less important. As director, you are responsible for this. I was responsible for this, and if I were still there, I'd be doing what Chris Ray is doing, is figuring out, so how did this happen, and is it systemic? Oh, boy. Classic Comey maneuver there. Well, that's not how I I see it. I I read the report. By the way, libs love to do this. When you get them on a core point of whether it's the Mueller report or the Inspector General report on Pfizer or whatever, they go, well, I I, I saw different things in the report. I mean, I spoke to a Democrat who was over Fox News who kept saying that the dossier wasn't used at all in the Pfizer. And I was like, the Inspector General said today on Capitol Hill that the dossier was a major part of the Pfizer application. Major part. That without it, you probably wouldn't have had a FISA. That means it is major. Oh, no, that's not what he said. That's not what he said. They're just denying, they're denying reality. Now they deny facts. Now, they de- now that we have facts after they've had conspiracies all this time, now they deny it. But Comey here is asked this very straightforward question. And he goes, well, he didn't find intentionality. That's not true. He said that t- intentionality could be the case or... It could be just massive screw-ups. The inspector general doesn't know. It's not that there was no intentionality. It's just he was unable at this point to prove intentionality but does not rule it out as why this all happened. And they keep pretending that it's been ruled out. No, that's, that's a different thing. And oh, by the way, if it's not intentionality to fabricate evidence to get a FISA, what is intentionality? That was not a mistake. Lying about Carter Page... Allowing the claim to get put through the federal government chain. Uh, Carter Page, who was trying to help the CIA. Carter Page was being a patriot. And they tried to say that he was a traitor. Do you think Comey feels any, Sancta Comey feels any sense at all of maybe this wasn't okay? No, of course not. I don't know, because that would then raise a whole bunch of other questions. Why would anybody in the FBI want to lie about not just make carter page seem like something he wasn't but to lie about it in that process and once you understand that there was one lie why shouldn't we believe that there were others once you understand that this was a willful decision in order to make the fisa application look more urgent and more uh reality based than it was what about the other decisions that were made i think these are all entirely legitimate questions and James Comey does not have answers to it 
he does not uh, deal with the facts as presented. He also claims that the dossier, you still hear people say this, that the dossier is somehow either not important to the FISA or the dossier is still somehow maybe true. They've created this new, and this, by the way, is a, a left wing. I mean, you see this with totalitarians all throughout history. You see this in the Soviet Union. The left did this to Kavanaugh. If you can't prove our baseless, evidenceless allegation untrue, we will continue to use it against you. If you cannot show us that, you know, you weren't definitively you know, at this, uh, you know, having this conversation with this person 20 years ago, we have no proof you did, but if you can't prove you didn't, we're just going to keep saying it. It's very tough to prove a negative, folks. I mean, how, how does anybody know? But this is the new evidence or the new standard of evidence that is being used against Republicans all over the place. This is what they are saying. This is what they are doing. It is, it is uh, simply appalling. We should all be deeply upset by it. And, and then, of course, there's the um, the reality that James Comey is a, has told us that he's, I mean, he's a bad guy. He has done things that you would only do if you were going after an administration. Here, remember this, he, he admitted this. This was at some speech he gave, you know, making all this money now, that uh, he abused the process to go after General Flynn. I mean, he knew the weak seams in the bureaucracy, a new administration comes in, and they think, see, their mistake was thinking that James Comey was an ethical and honest person. General Flynn's mistake was thinking that the FBI, as his incoming national security advisor, is on the same team as he is. He didn't realize, no, they're on deep state team. They're not on his team. Here's Comey admitting exactly that. Play a clip seven. Something we, I probably wouldn't have done or maybe gotten away with, in a more organized investigation, a more organized administration, in the George W. Bush administration, for example, or the Obama administration, <laughs> the protocol, two men that all of us have perhaps increased appreciation for uh, over the last two years. <laughs> <laughs> and in both of those administrations, there was process. And so if the FBI wanted to send agents into the White House itself to interview a senior official, you would work through the White House counsel, and there'd be discussions and approvals, and who would be there. And I thought, it's early enough. Let's just send a couple guys over. <laughs> and so uh, we placed a call to Flynn, said, hey, we're sending a couple guys over. Uh, hope you'll talk to them. He said, sure. Nobody else was there. They interviewed him in a conference room at the White House Situation Room, and he lied to them. Weaponizing the process, James Comey 101. So we, we were just talking about, about Comey and, and how he used the disarray of the incoming Trump administration to set a trap for General Flynn. Why would he even have those FBI agents go over there? Let, let's back this up a little bit. I mean, folks, this is bureaucratic warfare that was being waged against the administration. Comey admits to it here. He goes, yeah, we'll just send a couple of guys over. They think, hey, you know, we're just meeting with the National Security Advisor. We're just FBI guys coming to talk to you. Maybe you can help us with something. He sets it up like they're colleagues. And then they start interrogating him about a phone call that he, like, vaguely remembers because there was nothing wrong with it, and who cares? Then they want to criminally charge him. The guy loses his job. You know, that's to resign in disgrace. Because of what? Because, you know, he, he talked to uh, Ambassador Kizilyak of Russia. Oh, by the way, do we know yet who leaked? Which would have been a, a violation of, uh, you know, top secret classified information. Anybody know who, vi who violated that yet in the government? Someone in the government passed that on to the Washington Post. Someone in the government decided to break their oath and to be a felon, to commit a felony just to just to throw some mud at General Flynn. This is who we're up against. Don't ever forget who these deep state people really are, what they're willing to do. The pretext for this meeting? Don't ever forget this either. Sally Yates, Comey, McCabe, they're all... The pretext was a violation of the Logan Act. 
that's not really a law. A law that has never been used in 200 years is not really a law. It's arcane, you know, legal jeopardy. It's not a law. I mean, jeopardy is in the game show. You know, it's a trivia question. That was what they used to go talk to a national security advisor just so they could try to jam him up on a, a 1001 violation under the criminal code. He lied about something. Lied about what? A material investigation about a law that doesn't exist? This is weaponizing process. These people know how to do it. This is why. What's the one thing I always tell you if you listen to the Buck Saxton show? There's one bit of advice you have to take away from this show other than, you know, don't ever be without a good drink, a good book, or a sturdy firearm when you need one. I mean, what's the one bit of advice that you really absolutely have to remember? Don't ever talk to the FBI. Don't ever talk to them. They're not, they're not, they're not there to be your friends. They're not there to help you. They're not there to have a conversation. Don't ever talk to them. If you do, you do it with council president under very specific circumstances, and you make sure you're protected. So they'll jam you up. Easiest thing in the world. And then you work for them. That's what's their favorite thing. Get, they just talk to you. Maybe they, you know, you, you want to be a little more helpful than you should be, but then they ask you something that's a little embarrassing, and you lie about a little thing here, you shade the truth a little bit there, boom. Now you do whatever they say or you go to prison. And you might still go to prison even after, even after doing everything they say. This is their favorite thing to do. Don't ever, ever talk to the FBI. Okay, because even if you're an innocent person, you might get yourself into trouble, which is exactly what happened to General Flynn. That's my point. And even if you're guilty, by the way, you're not doing yourself any favors. They're never going to be like, oh, this guy was really nice. And uh, he talked to us. So, like, you know, that that bank fraud charge, we're just going like, to wipe that one away. Mm-mm. It's not how it happens. So you do yourself no favors. But here's Comey bragging about it. It's early in the administration. They thought understandably, the, the National Security Advisor, 30-year military veteran, all right, but, but the National Security Apparatus hated him because he was willing to say that Obama didn't know what the heck he was talking about on national security, didn't understand the dynamics of the Middle East, had a horrible foreign policy, let ISIS rise. I mean, so Flynn was a, a problem for the national security establishment that had people like Ben Rhodes and Samantha Power at the top of it, which is appalling, by the way. These people are unethical, and they're not very smart. They think they're smart, which is even scarier. But he's telling us that he abused the process. He's telling us that this was bad faith. We don't have to search for this. It's right out there in public. Sent over a couple of agents. To find out what, Comey? What was the purpose? To find out if you had a phone call that might have been a Flynn Act. I mean, a Flynn Act. They should call it the Flynn Act now. A Logan Act violation? Really? pretextual, almost like taking a dossier of false information and then, you know, dressing it up a little bit and carving some stuff out of it that doesn't look good and make it seem like you really believe this dossier, so I guess you got to get a FISA on this person. If the people entrusted with government power in the executive branch are willing to act because of partisan motivation with bad faith in the process, there is a, there's a tremendous amount of damage that they can do along the way. They have a lot of authority. They have a lot of ability to manipulate the way the process works. And as I've said to you, this has been weaponized against Trump all along. And in, and the process is the punishment, too. They keep saying, well, you know, why Trump can't go to the courts to figure out who should and should not have to testify in the sham impeachment. Oh, that's a violation, they say now. He's not even allowed to do that. They weaponize the process. Because the, the bureaucratic mentality, unfortunately, is... Uh, is is very much tied to people who have no particular, you know, for someone to be a true dyed in the wool bureaucrat, they have no real moral compass. Uh, they they don't like to think for themselves. They like to do what the institution tells them to do. They protect the institution. They derive meaning and support and a sense of perhaps even superiority from their connection to that institution. And as a result, they're also very comfortable wielding the power of it for purposes that they think are ideologically uh, important for them. And that's what we see happening here. Um, the Comey interview, you have to watch. I, I wish I'd played more clips of it, but you get the idea. you got to watch the whole thing. You will, The fact that this guy was a federal prosecutor making decisions that affected people's lives and the fact that he then became FBI director should be 
terrifying to people. He's not a good guy. He's the kind of guy who, in an earlier time, would have been sending people off to the work camps in Siberia, but giving them a big smile and saying, you know, this is what is best for you, and I am doing my patriotic duty, and the motherland will thank you. Now go freeze to death because I'm the bureaucrat who gets to tell you that that's where you're going. And Comey has that mentality. Doesn't, doesn't talk of mercy, doesn't talk of, you know, doing the, doing the things that normal people would do in these circumstances. It's always, oh, Comey's sanctimonious little speech like he thinks he's just giving the you know the Gettysburg address or the funeral oration by Pericles or something all the time everything Comey says is treated with this kind of absurd elevation at least in his own mind and speaking of but the dossier he also lied he lied about the dossier said the dossier was not central based on the IG report yes it was they keep saying it was it was absolutely central and if not the dossier then what if they did not need the dossier for the FISA warrants, then what is the piece of real evidence? Christopher Steele, biased anti-Trump Christopher Steele, fact, his Russian subsources? This is a disinformation campaign. Disinformatio. But media didn't understand that because the media has really unfortunately become, it's like almost an extension of Hollywood now. I mean, you have all of these people who they just, they have the most... Uh, the, the, such a lack of rigor in their thinking. They have the flimsiest of foundational and philosophical understandings of politics. They just want to bleat the talking points. And they know that it's much easier for, and so the, you know, the weak-minded and the cowardly, it's much easier to be a leftist in our media, appar- in, in our media apparatus than it is to be a conservative. So that's what it, it brings them all in, and they all operate in these echo chambers, and they think they're so smart, and they think what they say is true, and they're a bunch of idiots. Here they are telling the American people that the Trump dossier was somehow accurate. Producer Mark, please play clip two. We do know that parts of it have been corroborated. It's not been corroborated, but it hasn't been disproven either. Is there anything in the dossier that has been disproven? No. But not one thing has been disproven. No major thing from the dossier has been conclusively disproven. To date, none of it has been disproven. And whole big parts of it are holding up. The dossier um, holds up well. None of it has been disproven. All of the allegations in it, I don't know that anything has been disproven. It's a fact that none of it, not one word, has been disproven. In fact, a lot of it turned out to be right on the money. Former high-ranking intelligence officials have told us on the record that there is nothing in the Steele dossier that they know to have been disproven. Much of the dossier has been corroborated. Do you not accept that they... I don't agree with that, Alice. This is our reporting, and this is what, um, this is what crime fighting agencies have said, that the FBI would not have just taken a dossier to the FISA court and used that as their predicate for the surveillance. They had to corroborate it themselves. That's how they operate. All of them are wrong. All of that is untrue. And so we are left to answer a a question here. Are they idiots or are they liars? I, I can't tell you right off the bat. I, I'm not quite sure which it is. It, it's, it's one of the two. Are they idiots or are they liars? There is no third option. What they're saying about the, do, uh, the dossier being corroborated is clearly false. There is nothing in there that is uh, of substance that matters that would certainly be noteworthy for inclusion in a FISA warrant. Oh, and let's not forget that when James Comey says the people that are no longer a part of the campaign, that doesn't, that's a dodge. It doesn't matter. When they have Pfizer and they can go through all of your email, all of your phone contacts, everything, all of your electronic communications, they go through all of it. So they could go back in Carter Page's emails and text messages for two years. So, of course, they can see every contact he had with the campaign. It's just – that's why he, he's so dishonest. He's just hoping people – are so are, are so dumb or so distracted that they don't see who he really is and what's really happened here. This is a massive scandal. This should undermine your faith, not just in the FBI, but in the fairness of our entire government apparatus. It should. That should be your feeling now, that there should be concerns, foundational concerns about whether the United States government has been so infiltrated, and I mean the government, like government agencies and government employees, 
have been so infiltrated with left-wing bias that they don't even know what bias is anymore, just like the media. I think that's where we are. What does that mean for us going forward? What does it mean if you're a conservative and you're accused of a crime somewhere? Do I honestly think that at my level even, and I've had people you know, come up to me recently on the street and say they like my work here and there. I'm sure some people are going to come up soon and say they don't like it, you know, libs. Uh, do I think that I would get a fair trial in New York City or, or Washington, D.C., where I used to live? No, I do not. Certainly wouldn't get a fair federal trial. Um, you know, maybe like for a drunken disorderly, if I had to, you know, knock a guy out with a haymaker. But uh, no, I mean, I, I think... I think that we all understand now that, that people believe that what they have to do is fight conservatism in every way at every point in time to fight Trumpism in every way and to, you know, to yell at people, to attack people who are MAGA hats. I mean, this has become standard operating procedure for many on the left, and they don't make any apologies for it. And if that mentality has gotten through the government, too, if that's what people think at CIA and FBI and NSA, and what does that mean for the future? Based on what you know so far, is it still? Do you still stand by your statement that 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 the campaign was spied upon? Oh, it's clearly spied upon. I mean, that's what electronic surveillance is. I think wiring people up to go in and talk to people and make recordings of their conversations is spying. I think going through people's emails, which they did as a result of the FISA warrant, they went through everything. You know, from from Page's life. This is controversial now. To say. Something is what it clearly is triggers liberals. I used to work for a spy agency. We usually think of ourselves as intelligence officers. We're spies. That's what you do. You're spying. You're finding ways to spy on stuff and people. Oh, um, this is what you had. I think it was Brennan who was like, oh, no, we don't. The CIA. This is the CIA director. Obama appointee. We the CIA. We don't spy. We we coerce, we we induce, we but, but we don't spy. It's like the dumbest the dumbest thing that a government employee perhaps has ever said. The CIA doesn't spy. It's a spying agency. It's like saying the Department of Education doesn't educate, although some people might actually make that might make that case and make it pretty well. But you get what I'm saying. It was absurd. But you can't say spying is spying. You can't say FISA abuse is FISA abuse. Now they've just gone to this desperation of, you know, clinging to certain words, avoiding the use of other words. It's all just narrative control. And this is why it's so important for them also to do this impeachment thing when they're doing it, to have the focus on how bad Trump is, not the focus on the people that were telling you that the president was a traitor and that any day now the other shoe was going to drop. We're going to find out that, you know, Donald Trump Jr. and... Uh, you know, Paul Manafort were smoking cigars with Putin in his DACA, uh, talking about how they're going to throw the election or something. I mean, some absurdity. The people that were promising you that stuff, and there were a lot of people, and they've built followings. They've got hundreds of thousands of social media followers now. They've written books. I mean, they're just peddling lies. Those people were all wrong, all of them. You who listen to this show have been spending your time learning about things going on in the world and the news cycle that are actually true. All those other people, people that are watching Rachel Maddow every night, they were getting propaganda. They were getting falsehoods. Just just spoon-fed to them. And they're not upset about it, which is even more concerning. No, in fact, people just double down at this point. They don't want Barr to say spying when there was clearly spying. They want to tell me things are in the Inspector General report that are not and things that are aren't. The denial of reality, I mean, the denialism here among the libs is appalling. Uh, but then we also have some other stories to get to today, my friends, including uh, another opportunity for um, shrill moral preening from the left that throws uh, cadets from the uh, Army-Navy game under the bus, which we know libs have no, no problem doing that whatsoever. They're, they're perfectly happy when the opportunity presents itself. As long as they can have, uh, they, they can raise consciousness in some way about, raise awareness, I mean, ab about uh, white supremacy, which is this, this great uh, threat to the nation that liberals are hyperventilating about, uh, hyperventilating about all the time. And it, it is not what they say it is. White supremacy has been expanded as a term now to include 
things that no normal person would ever consider to be white supremacist. Uh, this is where we are as a nation. This is where we are as a country. And uh, we will get into that, uh, that truth. Maybe I'll tell you, uh, we'll play this Antifa training video thing that's kind of fun. Oh, and then also uh, cab drivers need to know pronouns, preferred pronouns now in New York City. This is a new, a new rule. We'll get to it. 